We are now four days past the deadliest mass shooting ever in the city of Buffalo. And as the investigation moves forward, there are lingering questions about the red flags that could have tipped people off beforehand. We're going to have an extended conversation in just a moment with the top prosecutor in the accused shooter's hometown that's more than three hours away. First, though, let's get you caught up on some of the latest developments happening right now. A huge show of support today from Buffalo sports stars at the scene on Jefferson Avenue. This marked another day of healing with Bills, Sabres and Bandits players all paying their respects along with a lot of members of the community. Tomorrow, the focus turns to the courtroom with the suspected shooters felony hearing scheduled for 930 in the morning in front of the city's chief judge. These hearings sometimes get waived and don't happen, so we'll keep you posted on that. And we got some new details today from Broome County, where the 18 year old defendant allegedly made a murder suicide threat at his high school last year. He was forced to undergo a mental health evaluation and was deemed not a threat to himself or others. The district attorney there says in the months since then, he was not on the radar of local authorities. You just wish that uh, he had some friends or someone who would uh, be able to discourage him from this kind of conduct. But um, again, if he's radicalized online, I don't know who he was talking to or following, but uh, you know, it's a very disturbing trend. And uh, you know, we're hoping that by looking at the system and how it works, maybe this is the last time we'll have something like this. And joining us now is District Attorney Michael Korchek from Broome County. Sir, thanks so much for your time. It's good to have you here. I listened to the update that you provided earlier this afternoon, and I want to start with that incident that was almost a year ago in which the suspected shooter made this threat to his school there in Broome County. I know state police got involved. He did spend a night in the hospital to get a mental health evaluation, but he was deemed not to be a threat to himself or others. And so it seems like there wasn't a whole lot that happened after that. He went back to school. He graduated. Do you have confidence that the mental health evaluation was conducted properly? And what else have you learned while investigating that particular incident? Well, from my years of being a prosecutor, I know that uh, you can't really evaluate someone thoroughly in a short period of time. I mean, that's the constraints that the mental health professionals work under, that there's a short window, a small window of time for them to evaluate someone. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't prevent someone from having a mental health crisis the next day or six months from there or a year from there. So. Uh, I don't know if the evaluations have to be looked at, uh, maybe hold the person for a longer period of time. But in this particular case, back in 2021, the defendant was evaluated, uh, was cleared, and he actually returned to school and participated in his graduation. So at that point in time, with no long mental health history, um, what happened on Saturday couldn't be detected clearly at that point. Uh, what prosecutors are looking at now is what happened after that incident up until last Saturday to try and piece together how something this terrible could happen. Does there need to be some type of required follow up? You think that that maybe could have caught some of the other um, red flags that, that we now looking back can see. We're still constrained by New York state law that realistically you can't force anyone into mental health treatment. You can't force someone to take their medication if they're prescribed medication. So it, it's really a difficult situation. We live in a free society, but we have to protect the individuals in the community. That clearly didn't happen in this case, but in the case of the school and the state police and the mental health professional that evaluated uh, this individual, there really wasn't much they can do. You go with the information you have at the time. Uh, I don't know what this individual was doing. There were no police reports or other activity because he did graduate from school. Uh, as far as anyone calling in complaints about him from that date in 2021 till the tragedy of last Saturday. Obviously, everybody wants to look at ways to prevent something like this. You are not a lawmaker. You're a prosecutor. As you mentioned, you know, you, you follow the laws that are on the books. But as you look at this case, especially since the suspect made that threat last year, and then you add to that the awful things that he's accused of posting online in, in this manifesto, this racist rant, what do we learn from this? And what would you like to see change in the future? It's a very fine line that you're that you're treading between the First Amendment of being able to post anything online or read anything online or say what you want to say and 
kind of recognizing where it crosses the line into mental illness, where someone is a danger to themselves or the community, um, to maybe to make more mental health services available to people. But you know that costs money and and time and positions. And I understand uh, the lawmakers' uh, problems that they face, you know, re regarding that. But um, without a criminal charge being filed or without the mental hygiene law kicking in where someone is evaluated and found to be dangerous, you really can't incarcerate someone in New York State for being mentally ill, but you still have to protect the community. So it's a very difficult situation that the lawmakers and prosecutors are in. It seems like a lot of what he posted online does cross that line. It seems like it, it's not so much free speech as it's describing the plot that he is carrying out. Um, just to be clear, do you have any evidence that 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 documentation was turned over to authorities or anybody in your office? Not in, not in our office. I mean, I don't know if he was under investigation by any uh, agencies, but uh, it appears that I don't know who monitors those uh, websites. We don't have the, the manpower to do that. We're dealing with the crime in Broome County. But uh, as far as cybercrime and the FBI, I'm not sure if they were monitoring that information or, or not. Going forward, how involved is your office right now in terms of speaking with people who knew the suspect, uh, his classmates, his friends, coworkers, and also what about his parents and other family members? Well, Erie County District Attorney Flynn is heading the investigation along with the state police and the FBI. Uh, we have offered our assistance to DA Flynn as well as to the state police and um, you know the FBI. Whatever they need us to do here, and if we can help, we're going to do it. But the investigation is really being led by the FBI and the state police at this point. I wonder if you can clarify a, a statement that you made earlier today during the news conference that a lot of people are now discussing on social media. You were asked if this was terrorism and you said as a prosecutor, you know, to you it, it is a crime because you have to, to prosecute it as a crime, but you said terrorism to you is planes flying into buildings. And I think a lot of people look at this and think um, this was terror directed at the black community in Buffalo. Um, do you think that this was terrorism? Well, it was clearly terrorism, but it all depends what your definition of terrorism is. Either way you look at it, it's an act of evil perpetrated by this individual, and he should be held responsible to the fullest extent of the law. Uh, I, as I mentioned in the press conference, what really causes the terror on top of that is the copycat crimes, where individuals in the community think this might not be over, there could be more of these attacks, and that's what creates, you know, the terror within the community. Uh, obviously, this until we find out more information, this was an act conducted by one individual. Uh, he is charged with first degree murder and he will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Can I ask you what the feeling is like right now in your community in Broome County and, and the connection and, and I suppose the grief um, and the sadness and the anger that people are feeling there, there uh, because of the connection to the awful thing that happened here? Well, everyone thinks that maybe if they saw something or heard something and reported it, maybe it could have uh, changed the course of history. You know, it's always easy to look back after the fact and, and find out that, 